uh, the radiation treatment, the, the, the chemicals, uh, the chemo, um, the whole shebang. Um, so I think it's important to point out that what happened, that the decisions that were made were made with the full knowledge that my wife was dealing with life and death. Um, and I would like to acknowledge the incredible support. Ms. Obamswin had what I would call the spiritual insight to realize the role of Laura and the family in, in our lives. Um, I'd like to acknowledge Laura's brother, Ray, is here. Um, Ray is a, a registered nurse, as is uh, Laura's only sister, um, Suzanne. And um, um, things deteriorated. And on uh, Monday, uh, the 5th of July, 2010, at 2.05 in the morning, Laura died. But her brother and her sister and, and her whole family, I don't know how anybody makes it through cancer, through a fatal disease without family and friends and the support that the Villamay family gave. Um, and I would like to publicly acknowledge that. Thanks, Ray. He has a question in the back. Um, well, first of all, thank you for being here, and uh, our uh, condolences to you and your family. But in large way, in some way, you actually showed us that we're all a family, because you've touched a subject that is true to all of us in a way. You know, the fear of listening to our own voices. And I think probably what happened to McGill University is fear, because we create boxes in our lives. But maybe it's, you know this is a, an opportunity too, because I think if you look at all the geniuses, from uh, Edison to Mozart to Darwin, Newton, they all thought outside of the box. They looked at different things that were not connected. And I see you do that in your work and enabling people to think. Um, I think there's an opportunity maybe for you to branch out. I mean, here in the United States, you can always start your own school um, to complete a book about your teaching uh, theories because we need that more than ever with the challenges the world faces with, uh, from the environment, the economy. We need people to think for themselves much more than they ever have. We're all, a lot of people are led by their noses. So I think you, you have an extraordinary platform bringing us all here. So I encourage you to go the distance like you encourage your students to do. You could, you could speak for you know, a much larger audience, go to the TED conference, so on. Thank you. All I need, I was wondering on um, the quote in the, at the, in the title of the film that I really love, um, since when did the uh, right, since when did the right answer, uh, wait, since doing the right thing be the wrong answer? Um, where did that quote come from? How, to, how what does it mean to you? That uh, Dr. Um, Professor Cornett said in one of the classrooms. It's in the film and uh, it was so, People thought you're crazy, it's a much too long title. <laughs> but uh, I, I didn't want it to just write uh, Professor Norman Cornett, so this is why I uh, took it as a title. But to this day, they say, oh, it's much too long. But uh, it makes people think, and I'm glad I did it. <laughs> in, in that vein, I, I, another principle that we have in our dialogic sessions, which continue, they never stopped. I, I've made a commitment to dialogue. And so I'll throw that out to you, the audience. There's only one wrong question. It's the unasked question. And I think we're moving towards the end of the time, so if you have a question, I'd encourage you to ask it. I saw someone there in the room. We have time for just one, two more questions, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Actually, just um, for uh, the director, I guess why did you choose this project, why is the story you wanted to tell? 
And then also really quickly for Dr. Burnett, can you explain the nicknames? Well, first of all, um, ever since that I was a very young person, I had made up my mind that I would find a way to do something to make changes in the educational system. And of course at that time I had no clue what to do. And uh, because I feel that when I went to school that I was uh, part of, I, what I was taught was a system of false education. And it takes a very long time in your life to understand that. And to finally understand why uh, are these things happening to us as native people in our country. And then you look at the educational system and you see how uh, it played a very large role to uh, do the false education about who we were and uh, create a terrible life for our people. But as you live it, as you are in school, you just survive today and tomorrow is another day. I was too young and I did not understand what I was in. I had to live much longer to understand it and then find a way somehow to get into the classroom. I thought I have to be in the classroom and talk to the students so that w they will hear something else and what they're being thought about us. And the only way I could see that I could do that was at the time I was singing and uh, I started touring in a lot of schools across the country and uh, singing and talking about history and showing Indian games to children at hundreds and hundreds of schools. And it was from that that eventually someone made a film about what I was doing and the National Film Board of Canada, some of the producers invited me to go there and then I discover an incredible powerful place to, to teach. They had a studio who did uh, programs only for classrooms. And that's how I started to work there. And it was just so incredible. I, I didn't even have to go places. The films were there doing its job. It's total magic. <laughs> and so I've been doing it uh, for 42 years. And my ideas or my reasons are still the same. It's to make changes in the educational system. And it's to make... Uh, an exchange in terms of the knowledge of our people and the knowledge that others can teach us. But it's for our people to have a voice. About the names, the greatest gift that you can give to a student is to enable them to find their own voice, to articulate their own identity. Um, when you finish your degree, there is no textbook for life. You've got to learn to think for yourself and to know what you think. Um, part of that, too, is the role of creativity in education. Creativity is arguably the greatest gift of the human species, and often the most unused. Um, Alanis's, I just like to say, um, Alanis's films have changed laws for the improved and better lives of First Nation people there in Canada. Her films are very powerful and impactful. Uh, you can find any of her films on the National Film Board website. So I just would love to say that it's just um, a great privilege to have both of these here, these people here on stage, Anis that makes powerful films for change, and Professor Cornette that teaches education in a way that students really want to learn and learn more than just in the classroom, but about themselves. So please, once again, thank you for having them here. Thank you.